Murphy's Builder Supply is where you need to go for all your home improvement projects and hardware needs. They've been serving folks in this area since 1946. Murphy's offers some products and services that you may not know about. They now sell ammunition, both bullets and shells. Murphy's also sells personalized tags for dog collars. They build customized screens for windows and doors. Murphy's can re-key locks, and of course they can make keys. They cut glass for windows, plus Murphy's has monthly door buster specials. Check their Facebook page to see what's on sale. Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Road. Broad Street, Jessup. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings Restaurant in Jessup is now open for business, practicing social distancing, but still serving that great food that Damon's is famous for. Come inside or come through the drive through but Damon's is open inside and welcomes back its customers. The menu's the same, the service is fast, and the food is fantastic, and the sauces remain the same, mild, wild, insane, or inferno. The number is the same, 588-WING, 588-9464. Damon's Restaurant on West Cherry Street in Jessup, dining room now open for business. Come on in and enjoy a great meal today. A bank that puts people first. First Southern Bank, investing in you since 1907. Serving Jessup, Patterson, and Waycross. A true community bank led by experienced neighborhood bankers that live and work in our community. Offering competitive loan options for commercial and consumer clients. Stop by the Jessup branch and meet branch manager Mandy Yeomans and her fantastic team. Call 912-810-1540. Let First Southern Bank be your bank of choice. First Southern Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. 757 here at the Big Dog WIFO. Time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show. Brought to you by First Southern Bank, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, and Murphy Builder Supply. Good morning, everybody. Today we've got Reggie Burgess in the studio for the Wayne County School System. He was originally scheduled to just talk about the virtual, op- I mean, open house being pushed back a week. But after yesterday's board meeting, there's all kinds of things to talk about, Reggie. There's, yeah, there's a bunch to talk about. What do you um, want to talk about first? Uh, if I could, I'd like to recognize some of our retired teachers and, and other educators. Oh, that's right. That's what, yeah, and, um, that's we, right. Yeah, we've got normally in the, in the spring each year we have a, a reception, a retirement reception for these employees who have given uh, years of service to the school system. But they, th- with the pandemic the way that it was this past year, we weren't able to do that. So we'd like to take this opportunity just to call out their names and give a little bit of information about them and, and share that with the public. Um, and these, these names I'm going to read are in alphabetical order. The first is... Uh, Teresa Anderson. Uh, she taught at Wayne County High School for the entirety of her 26-year teaching career. Uh, next is Miss Iris Arnheider. She worked in school nutrition for 10 years and five months in the Wayne County Schools uh, at both Jessup Elementary and Arthur Williams. Jan Arwood worked in the Wayne County School System for 30 years. Uh, first, she was an unofficial parent volunteer and substitute teacher for Scriven Elementary, Jessup Elementary, and Wayne County Junior High. Uh, and then she worked. At, uh, she got a parapro license and worked at uh, the Junior High and later at Oak Vista. And then she finished out her career since uh, not, uh, October of 1989 as the uh, clerical support staff at the Materials Center. Darlene Galvin worked in the Wayne County Schools for 26 years and uh, 13, 13 and 13 years in Florida. Uh, Miss T- Leslie Tyre uh, retired with 30 years of service in the state of Georgia. She worked uh, for 27 years here in Wayne County. Uh, Lenise Williams Jackson began teaching third grade at Jessup Elementary um, at the young age of 21, and she worked for a total of 32 years in our school system in various positions. Karen Jorgensen taught in Wayne County Schools for 30 years at uh, T.G. Rich, James Bacon, and Jessup Elementary. Newella, Luella Norwood worked as a parapro in, in the school system for 22 years at Jessup Elementary, T.G. Rich, and Martha Rawl Smith. Kimberly Olds retired with 30 years of total service and 25 of those in Wayne County Schools and Odom Elementary. Uh, Donna Pye worked as a parapro uh, in Wayne County Schools for 17 years at Cedarwood and Odom Elementary. Margaret Roberts worked uh, all of her 28 years in Wayne County Schools uh, school system. She began as a parapro, then became a teacher and an instructional coach. She worked over at uh, Oak Vista, Odom Elementary, Scriven Elementary, and Arthur Williams Middle School. Coach Paul Rothwell is retiring with 39 years of service. 39, my goodness, 39 years. He taught uh, and coached in Wayne County Schools for the past 15 years. And prior to that, he taught in uh, Louisiana, Texas, and Atlanta. Uh, Kim Sims retired with 31 years of service in the Wayne County School System. She was a teacher, special ed director, assistant director, and most recently director of special education. And uh, she also worked in Scriven, Odom, James Bacon, and at the central office. Margaret Spearman taught in Wayne County Schools for 30 years, and she spent uh, all of her uh, school year, all of her years in, in the Wayne County School System, starting off at Orange Street Elementary, Jess Elementary, and then James Bacon Elementary. Linda Tyre worked in the Wayne County School System for 26 and a half years and spent all that time at Scriven Elementary. Tracy Vanderveen taught in Wayne County Schools for 29 years uh, with uh, service at T.G. Rich, James Bacon, and Odom Elementary. 
Martha Vitaveld worked in the school system for 20 years as a technology specialist. And Jan, uh, Janice White worked in Wayne County Transportation Department as a bus driver for 14 years. And finally, Sean Yeomans worked for 36 and a half years in the Wayne County school system. Uh, she started out as a bookkeeper and secretary in the school nutrition program, uh, went to the Wayne County Junior High, then Oak Vista, uh, Odom Elementary, Martha Puckett Middle, Arthur Williams Middle, Scriven Elementary, and Arthur Williams Middle. She'd been everywhere. Um, and then uh, two also that we wanted to mention, Sharon Asenwall and Norma Dennison, they also retired this past year. So uh, the school system would like to thank all of these retirees for their service, um, and uh, not just service to our community, but uh, to the children especially of our school system. Did they get to have a retirement reception at the end of the year? Or We're they? hoping to be able to do something for them. Uh, so they haven't had one yet? Not yet. Because no, so, they normally get recognized there and they get a, a plaque or That's correct, right. Them, so. yeah. well, we appreciate you coming in and recognize all those. So a lot of people retirement. Uh, the guys at the coffee shop tell me retirement is the best job in the world. I, so, I'm, I'm a few years away. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> they tell everybody that's what they tell me anyway. But anyway, uh, you know, growing up as a kid, I played kick the can as a young kid. Used to love that game, mm-hmm. but uh, we didn't have a lot of money. But it seems like everybody's just kicking everything down the road. Uh, yesterday's school board meeting just uh, caught me totally off guard because everything was set for August 24th. The deadline yesterday at four o'clock was whether or not they wanted to do virtual or go in school right but now everything's up in the air it's like monty hall and <laughs> let's make a deal you got curtain one curtain two curtain three curtain one is they're going to stay on course with schools opening august 24th to deal with the option but they didn't extend that deadline so that deadline yesterday was at four o'clock uh, right. they asked amy denny about the numbers she said about 1100 people had filled out the application but only about 700 had signed it but they were going to wait and see they had to talk to each school so it's close to a thousand kids have decided to just stay home and right. you know, not right. go to school. That's about twenty percent of our school system. And option two, they're talking about moving the start date to after Labor Day, September eighth. That was discussed yesterday at the board meeting, and it's still with the choice of attending school in person or virtual. And option three appears to be they could make a decision next Tuesday to have everyone begin the school year with virtual learning. So right. I wonder what the feedback's gonna be with those people that want to go to school. Right. So, I mean, we're going to hear from those people uh, at Tuesday's meeting, or what do you think is going to happen? I'm not sure. I just, I just, me personally, I just wish we'd go ahead and, and, and get going. I know there's a lot to consider, though. The, the, uh, Dr. Brinson and the school board, they're, they're in a hard position. They're, they're, they, they've got tough decisions to make because, um, like you said, you're, you're never going to make everyone happy, but, um, they truly do have the best interest of the children and our faculty and staff members at heart. Um, it, and it's such a fluid situation. It's hard to, to figure out. Uh, and, and it looks like we're, we're, we're so iffy on the decisions that are being made, but um, there's so much to consider in there to, to make sure that everyone's safe. That's that's the first and foremost concern. Well, I guess the first question is what's a week? You know, what's what's the difference in a week? You know? Right. So, but they say they're looking at the data every day, going by. You know, like I said, as you mentioned, it's a difficult decision because with the current situation in Wayne County, it seems to be you know. But I just don't know where they. It's like the college coaches that made that decision yesterday. I mean, mm-hmm. watching all the talking heads, they're asking, where's the medical – what what medical advice are they going on? And right. they've talked right. about how the medical advice is different in one part of the country and another part of the country. Right. So everybody's – the, 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 the frustrating thing I saw from Superintendent Brinson was what he's talking about, what – who do you follow? Do you mm-hmm. follow the Georgia Department of Public Health? Do you follow the CDC? Do you follow you – know, Everybody's got their own right. way of doing yeah. things, and the problem is the local school system's been thrown to the wolves. That you make the decision, right? They, yeah, like they I said, you're given the authority to make the decision, right. and, and nobody, nobody, know, but nobody knows what the what the right decision is. Right. So, but again, they they have decided to have another meeting this coming Tuesday at six p.m. Mm-hmm. And those are the. I, mean, I just want to make sure I'm explaining it right. Do you understand that? I mean, yes. I mean, those are the three options. Right? As, far as, as far as I know. So it's just option one, option two, option three. Option one is to stay where we were August 24th. Option two, September 8th. Option three is no in-school attendance at all, just virtual. Right. The other thing we should mention is they also reemphasize their stance. If they do have the choice between virtual learning and in-school, if you choose virtual, you cannot participate in any extracurricular activity. That's correct. And then they also went further saying if they go all virtual, then you've got a decision. You can play sports because right. the GHSA is currently on track to have a high school football season. That's right. And softball and volleyball are underway as well. So mm-hmm. that was decided yesterday also that right. if they go all virtual, but if you're involved in a sport, you will still be able to practice. Right. and. 
which I talked to Coach Cribb. They want to watch sports as much as I do, but mm-hmm. it seems crazy if you're going to say it's unsafe to go to school, but you can go play football. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It, it's crazy. I mean, that's just, um, and, and really, what the reason behind that is, if you if, if the parent makes a decision to keep their child home, um, then they're they're making the choice to to basically quarantine from from the general population of students. Um, so then they they they're sort of by default making that same decision to to quarantine away from the athletics. Whereas if the school system mandates everybody staying home, then that that really just kind of opens it back up and then and gives everyone a chance to participate who wants to. Right. So. Next Tuesday ought to be interesting, 6 p.m. Yes. So, but you do have the announcement the um, the open house has been pushed back a week. Is that correct? Right, that's correct. And so I mean, is that set in stone? That, that's not, it is. That's it not is. We're going to go on the 20th for that, same time, 3 o'clock on the 20th. And the reasoning behind that is if with when, when that August 13th deadline was set, um, that was that was set prior to making the offer or the decision to go to the distance learning option. Um, and so with yesterday being that deadline and the, the – this Thursday being the original date to, to have that open house, there's really not enough time for the school administrators and their teams to make schedules and be able to determine who is going to be in each class so that those teachers can then contact the families to be able to uh, access those open house videos. So uh, we, we're pushing that back a week to give our, our folks more time to be able to prepare schedules and get folks in the right classrooms. Another interesting question was asked yesterday by one of the board members is who decides who's teaching virtual and who's teaching in school and they just said that that those decisions are going to be made by the administration to each school the right. school right. will make that decision is that correct that's correct the uh the, the, the basically the, the principals will do interviews um i know that we do have some some folks in our system who um the, the adults the teachers are i can't say medically fragile but they they may have a condition that would uh be better for them to stay home and do distance learning um so the principals will, will take that into consideration we have some other folks and who have who have, who are asking for that option to be able to do that, um, and, and at this point, the, the distance learning, if I understand it correctly, is that if you're if you're teaching, um, it, it's not going to be uh, you're going to do regular teaching or distance learning. Uh, these these folks will be will be will receive a stipend to do both. So they'll they'll teach during the school day. They'll do their regular uh, eight hours during the school day, and then they'll they'll uh, do the other part um, in addition to their regular duties. No, they the discussion. You know, since you know, we they shut down school last year and everybody went virtual, but the discussions among the board members and the community was a lot of kids got left by the wayside because they weren't equipped to really do it. There's mm-hmm. some parts of the con- county that have no uh, internet service. They discussed that again last night. So I guess I'll start with the first question: If Wayne County decides to go virtual, are we capable of doing that? We are we are getting there. We're, we have a good infrastructure in place. We're trying to expand out to where we can um, add some additional hotspots um, in, in local places uh, such as churches and businesses out in those outlying areas, or even in town where folks may not have internet service. Miss um, Sandy Jones, our tech director, she she mentioned at the board meeting last night that there are several. She has uh, already s- several devices in place at. at spots around the county uh, at schools and other places and we're, we're going to expand those out into the, um, the other areas so that um, if a, a family needs internet internet service they can go to uh, they can go sit in the parking lot outside the tech center um, or at one of the schools and, and be able to pick up that signal to be able to do the work um, she also mentioned that we you know we're we don't we're not yet at a, at a position where we can do one-to-one for student devices so that every kid gets a, a Chromebook or an iPad or whatever the case may be but uh, we're 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 Working toward that, um, but one of the one of the hiccups we had in that was that we ordered uh, several, uh, uh, well over a thousand devices um, that got turned around on a ship coming from China, and so that all of our, our devices, you know, they're they're still in a port in China as far as we know. We're waiting on those to arrive, but um, we, uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Jones, did also uh, explore some other options to get uh, devices in case those do not show up uh, in the next few weeks. And one thing that helps, uh, we've been going to all these meetings, school board meeting, county meeting, city meeting, they're all talking about this CARES Act money, Mm -hmm. which is just uh, unbelievable how much money has been floating to all these communities. I mean, we're just one community. uh, The county out there, portion, the the school system's portion is $1.5 million. Uh, The CFO, R.J. Alders, talked about some of that money has already been spent. Mm -hmm. You get reimbursed for that money from the federal government. It's going to be interesting. i got Buddy Carter on tomorrow's show. I want to talk to him about that because my question is, where's all this money coming from? (laughs) I mean, we're just one community. And, right. I mean, you're talking about 159 counties in the state of Georgia, and you're talking nationwide. This mm-hmm. is happening everywhere. Yep. I mean, it's unbelievable how much that money is. is flowing. Does the money have to – the way I understand it, the money doesn't have to be – as long as you use it for COVID-19 expenses, right. you get reimbursed. Is That's that correct. correct? Yes. 
So all the things that we're purchasing, like the hand sanitizers, the uh, uh, anything that anything that we can use to be able to uh, combat this situation, um, that money can be used for. Like I said, it can be re- reimbursed. It doesn't have to be spent. There's not a checklist that says you have to spend it this way. But if we if we use it in a, in a in a means of uh, combating this this pandemic and trying to uh, better the education for, of our students, then then yes, we can spend those those funds for that. I'm just curious. You're a, you're a former teacher, former administrator. You know, I'm just you got a better feel of this than I do. I mean, they mentioned last night that some teachers are hesitant to go to school, but teachers are back. Um, the, some say teachers are excited to be back. You, know, mm-hmm. you see the signs. You mentioned the signs around. I don't know who won the contest yet. Mm-hmm. Anybody won the contest? Nobody's yet? won yet, so it's still out there. Still out there. Explain that contest. Uh, we we placed thirty signs around town and around the community around around Jessup, um, and and actually I say around the community also because the schools have them also. So if you haven't been out to the schools, there's some of your signs are there. You can find them there. But if uh, whoever uh, contacts me first and can give me the location of those thirty signs, the, uh, they will receive a fully stocked book bag full of uh, school supplies. And they're, they're black, and they say on there, we uh, we miss uh, your children, and it has a Y in, in the parentheses of your, um, because they're also our children. So the and that message comes from the Wayne County teachers. They are they are super excited to be back to work. We do have some that have, have expressed reluctance and and um, on on the safety issue, but um, by and large, you know, I, I would say well over ninety ninety five percent that I've talked to and, and had contact with are just excited to be back and ready to get the kids back in the classrooms. I said, I don't have a child, but I talked to a lot of my friends who have children because they're having to make that decision. I asked them, and most people tell me that they, their kids are just chomping a bit to get back to mm-hmm. school, that they want to get back with their friends and get back into a school setting and right. teacher one-on-one learning. So it'll be interesting to see how many people show up next Tuesday, what the sentiment in the community is. I'm sure they're going to get feedback between now and then. Mm-hmm. They did that one survey, but I guess they're not going to do a survey in, one, in a week. For, yeah, uh, no, no more surveys. I'm sure they can take uh, emails and phone calls and things like that. But I said this was just a uh, – just, this just caught me totally off guard yesterday. <laughs> had no idea that they were going to kick it down that road and <laughs> three more <laughs> options. So, <laughs> but again, in case you missed it, the school board met yesterday and no final decision on when school starts and how it starts. And all those decisions are going to be made next Tuesday at 6 p.m. And currently there's three options on the table. Option one is to stay on course with schools opening August 24th with the option of in-school attendance or virtual learning. And, again, that decision had to be made yesterday at 4 p.m., so that deadline has passed. Option two, they're talking about moving the start date to school to after Labor Day on September 8th with, again, the choice of attending school in person or virtual learning at home. And option three is a possibility that there's going to be no in-school attendance at all and just a total virtual setting here in Wayne County and the final decision to be made Tuesday at 6 p.m. So if you have an opinion or have a thought, you might want to contact your school board member or you might want to uh, send an email to the school system and uh, let your thoughts be known because uh, I think this uh, – I don't – I'm just going to throw this out there. I think if they do decide to go all virtual, there's going to be a lot of upset people, a lot of upset so. students, a lot of upset, you know. So, and if you, but, if you look at it just from an economic standpoint, and it's not about the money, I, 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 it, it frustrates me and angers me to no end that parents think that we're all about the money. It's it's this has nothing to do with you know teachers making more money or anything like that. This is, has nothing to do with that. But if you, if you look at it through the lens of economics, parents have to get back to work. If we're going to get our economy jump started, parents have to get to work, and many of them can't do that if they're keeping children. At home uh, because there just there aren't enough daycare options to be to handle you know four thousand students uh, and if you look at the data from this uh, from the uh, distance learning option the folks who, who expressed an interest in distance learning there was about seven hundred who sent in uh, the uh, the request to do that and also turned in the commitment form or the contract um, and those were two requirements that had to be done by four o'clock yesterday um, so seven hundred kids out of our total school system that's roughly. I'd say 17, 18%. So you've still got four out of five, you know, more than, more than 80% of our families want their kids back in a school site. So right. you know, that's, that's, that speaks volumes. You know, and you look at the statistics on, you know, how kids learn in school compared to virtual. I mean, there's a lot of advantages to being in school mm-hmm. with a one on one teacher. So, uh, Again, tough decisions to be made for sure, but again, in case you missed it again, that decision on when school opens, how school opens, is now all up in the air again and will be made on a school board meeting next Tuesday at 6 p.m. at the Tech Center. So 
First of all, it'll be interesting how many people attend that meeting, right. and it'll be interesting to see what the final decision is. Mm-hmm. But uh, we say final decision. It would be the same final decision <laughs> we hope for the last decision, three yes. weeks. So, <laughs> But um, once again, the decision's been kicked down the road to at least a week. Yep. Tuesday, uh, what day is that, Jonathan? you got the calendar in front of you. Tuesday, Today. August the 18th. 18th yeah. yep. So... 18th at 6 p.m. And I did also want to mention a couple other things that I, w- I want parents to, and everyone to understand that we're really uh, the the underlying decision and what we're doing here uh, is is the quality of our education. We want to make sure that students who are in the classrooms or doing virtual, whatever the case is, that it's high quality education. Because last year, honestly, when 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 we shut the doors on March 13th, I think it was. Um, we, we had hours. We, we we only had hours to make decisions about education. And uh, back then, you know, we we gave students the option to do the work or not do the work. It's not going to be that way this fall. So if you're you're doing virtual learning at home, uh, I know from middle and high school they're doing a program called Ingenuity, and it is extremely rigorous. So if kids are are under the impression that they're going to be able to sit home and do nothing and and earn a grade, they're 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 mistaken because it's going to be tough this year. Um, the virtual learning option is going to be. You know, we're going to support kids as best we can. We love our families. We we love our students, and we're going to help them every single way that we can. Uh, but they've got to understand that it's it's going to be uh, different. I mean, um, I'll be honest; I'm, I'm not going to throw my son under the bus, but he took a, a, a virtual class over the over the summer, um, and 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 could have done better. I mean, he he, he did okay, but um, you know, it's it's you've got to be very disciplined to be able to do distance learning, um, and not everybody's cut out for that. So um, it's it's tough. We're gonna we're gonna support kids as best we can, and uh, but parents are gonna have to understand also they're gonna have to step up and really uh, monitor these kids and make sure they're they're doing what they need to do. Um, one last thing I want to mention, and I because I, last time I was here I was gonna uh, mention about the the book bags and school supplies. I did have one organization contact me to let me know that there are uh, they're giving away free school supplies. Uh, some of the churches in our community have already done that, so I, I missed on the, the opportunity to to share that. But big sister, big brothers, and big big sisters of Wayne County are hosting their seventh annual back to school drive on August the sixteenth, and that's at the Hall Richardson Center. That'll be at four thirty p.m. Uh, that'll be a drive through event. They're gonna ask that that people who come please wear a mask and social distance um they're going to be giving away book bags school supplies and also going to have food for folks out there so that's uh, again that's the, the big brothers big sisters of wayne county hosting their seventh annual back to school drive on august the 16th at the hall richardson center 4 30 in the afternoon okay reggie always good to see you again you're welcome anytime uh yeah, just once again repeat the uh, the open house has been pushed back a week, not this yes. Thursday, but next Thursday, the twentieth. Is that correct? That's correct. Still, it's still at three p.m. Yes. So, how do people under you know people don't understand how they're going to do that? How do they, how, um, what, do they we, contact we, an individual school? Or, well, the, the, once we get those rosters set, and that's the reason for pushing that back was to give the principals time to get homeroom rosters done. And once those rosters are set, um, sometime between now and the twentieth, those teachers will contact all the parents in the in their homeroom, and they'll give uh-huh. them the information on how to access that link. And I mentioned this a couple of times. I'll mention it again, just you know, food for thought. But I haven't heard a lot about it. But if you got a special needs kids, you're just out of luck, right? Oh no, no, we're still going to support our special needs kids. It'll it'll look different than what we have in the past. But you know, we're we're still bound by law. We we have to serve service all kids as best we can. How do they do virtual learning? Though? Um, that's that's. That's going to be I'm interesting, that's but, that, but we will support them. We will we will provide the the support that that their uh, individual education plan calls for. I'm just surprised we haven't heard from those people. You know, normally they're you know because you got a lot of special need teachers yeah. that understand the importance of that one on one instruction. Mm-hmm. So, without in school attendance, I don't you know right. I just see those kids really falling by the wayside. So yeah, I hate they, to won't, see they that. won't be. We'll support them for sure. Okay, Reggie, always good to see you. Appreciate you coming in. Like I see if any more announcements, let us know. But it'll sure. be an interesting week, and we'll see how everything falls out next Tuesday. That's but it. I said, Monty Hall is going to be on hand with curtain one, curtain in. I just want to know if you can change the curtain for the door, or the box. <laughs> then they used to do that, Jonathan. Yeah. You don't take that. You can change it to trade it for a box. But anyway, good to see you, Reggie. We'll be, we'll be back to wrap it up after this. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. 
The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. A bank that puts people first. First Southern Bank, investing in you since 1907. Serving Jessup, Patterson, and Waycross. A true community bank led by experienced neighborhood bankers that live and work in our community. Offering competitive loan options for commercial and consumer clients. Stop by the Jessup branch and meet branch manager Mandy Yeomans and her fantastic team. Call 912-810-1540. Let First Southern Bank be your bank of choice. First Southern Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings Restaurant in Jessup is now open for business, practicing social distancing, but still serving that great food that Damon's is famous for. Come inside or come through the drive through but Damon's is open inside and welcomes back its customers. The menu's the same, the service is fast, and the food is fantastic, and the sauces remain the same, mild, wild, insane, or inferno. The number's the same, 588-WING, 588-9464. Damon's Restaurant on West Cherry Street in Jessup, dining room now open for business. Come on in and enjoy a great meal today. 821 here at the Big Dog WIFO FM on this Wednesday uh, morning. Uh, World Famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply, First Southern Bank, and Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings. Uh, if we were in Vegas, we could post the odds on what option they would decide on and see what the poll says. Yes, sir. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. I don't know I'm not I qualified. Know. I have no idea. But again, in case you missed it, school board met yesterday and everything about how school will open, when school will open, is still up in the air. Decision to be made next Tuesday at 6 p.m. They're looking at three different options. One is to stay on course with schools opening August 24th with the option of in-school attendance or virtual learning at home. Again, that decision had to be made yesterday at 4 p.m., so they should have the numbers probably later today on how many people decided to take that virtual option. Again, they were talking around 700 people had signed the form as of yesterday, but again, it was still trickling in as the school board met. Option two, they're talking about moving the start date after Labor Day, September 8th, with, again, the choice of attending school in person or virtual at home. And option three is there is a discussion of possibly going to all virtual and no in-school attendance. So, again, we'll wait and see what the decision is next Tuesday at 6 p.m. And, again, if you have a opinion or a thought, you might want to express it and contact your board member and let know where you stand on that those options. No dog in that hunt for me. Me neither. I, don't, I said I don't have a ch- You know, I talked to a lot of my friends that have kids, you know, because I asked them, you know, what, you know, what's the thought process? But again, the majority of people I talk to that have kids say their kids are, you know, ready to get back to school, they're ready to get see their friends, ready to have their teacher one on one, you know, get ready to get, you know, back to some type of normalcy in their life. Yeah. Yeah. And what you were saying there uh, during the interview about um, virtual learning is not for everybody. If I weren't forced to go to school, I'd blow it off and wouldn't do anything because it just never interested me that much. Yeah. I don't. I like to learn stuff, but I don't like yeah. to learn when I'm being taught. I'd be totally lost because, like I say, I'm computer illiterate, so I'd be, <laughs> I'd be out of luck. So. But, yeah. again, uh, just, you know, again, we talked about how seniors last year missed out on so much. You know, you're talking about another possible senior class. And like I said, I told you, my sister's already in Virginia because I right. they've already shut down the – the sports programs there, and like I said, he's that borderline athlete who had a possibility of getting a scholarship to play football. But you know, in order to do that, he had to be on the field to have tape and you know talk yeah, to different colleges. Students, so that's the only reason they really go to right. school in the first place mm-hmm. is because they like the extracurricular. Ex- so, well, there's yeah. a lot of opportunities not only yeah. in sports yeah. but in band and drama and everything else. Uh, I mean, it's there's just a lot of missed opportunities if you don't go to in school. So I don't know how you get a scholarship by attending class on a computer so you know and like i said the big 10 i mean guys like justin fields you know possible heisman trophy candidate he's not going to see any playing time at all so he made a decision to transfer last year and had a great year at ohio state was looking forward to this year but now without college football and those conferences of all those kids will just sit out and wait for the nfl draft so it's interesting but again if you want to hear all about the sports Angle, you can listen to, like I said, just a great lineup on AM 1370 Fox Sports. Again, Clay Travis got an interview yesterday with President Trump, and Dan Patrick broke the story about the Big Ten and Pac-12. He had that on Monday. He was kidding, catching a lot of heat because the Big Ten came out and said that they had made no decision, but, again, they voted on to make the decision on Tuesday. But he already broke the story because he had talked to all 12 presidents, and 10 of the 12 had voted to shut it down right, yeah. on Sunday night. So 
He said the announcement was going to come Monday. It didn't come Monday. It came Tuesday, but he still gets credit for breaking the story because he's the first one to announce that they would be shutting it down. Right. Then you got Romy noon until Romy three. Romy twelve from three, and then you know you got the and, uh, John Oliver and the you know this is college football, which is a great show, yep. and you know, a lot of people enjoy that because it's all college football 12, all the time, all the time, all year so, long. Yes. So there's some great program late at nights too. So you know, it's a great lineup on the AM 1370 Fox Sports. But again. Hats off to Clay Travis for getting that interview with President Trump. you got to get to work. It was funny that <laughs> he was talking to his engineer who lined up, the, you know, who got him on the phone, and he, the engineer told Clay Travis that the first thing President Trump told him was he he deserved a raise. And Clay <laughs> Travis doesn't believe that he told him. He said, why would I make that up? He said, that's what he told me. He said, I need a raise. But Clay Travis isn't buying it. So <laughs> he said, I'll have to get him back on so he can verify that story. <laughs> but they replayed the interview today. Yeah. So it was an interesting interview. Talked a lot of topics. But again. I'm sure it's podcast as well, like all right. the sports stuff. Yeah, exactly. He's a big Tom Brady fan. Didn't realize Trump was a big Brady yeah. fan. But he said he thinks Brady's going to do well down in Tampa. So the NFL, you know. Hard Knocks, the first edition last night on HBO with the two L.A. teams showing all the players being tested. I mean, they've got nurses. they, they, they got to get tested twice a day. In a week, they said only one player. The thing is with the Rams player tested positive. He'd been quarantined, but everybody else tested negative. They're still practicing. So mm-hmm. yeah. NFL camps are open. NFL says they're going full throttle with their season, getting ACC and SEC state they're having a season so we'll wait and see but i don't see that you know the question is are the dominoes going to fall you know yeah, not yeah. That the, you know so it'll be interesting to see if they can continue to move forward with their season high school wise again the Irk russell classic was canceled again wayne had game scheduled with statesburg on that saturday september the 5th at 9 p.m they moved the game to friday at 4 p.m at statesburg coach Cribb said statesburg We'll host it this year, and they'll come to our J.C. Stadium next year. So there won't be a Irk Russell Classic for Wayne County in the next two years. They're just going to do a home-and-home. Home. So, okay, that's right. Of course, that's still uh, to be determined. We we don't know at this point as you move out, even though we're about two weeks away. You, uh, you never know the way things are these days. Well, GHSA is going to make that decision because, like I said, even, yeah. even if Wayne County goes virtual, their sports seasons are going to continue because GHSA hasn't shut it down. I mean, they're moving forward. I mean, they pushed it back. They did away with the scrimmages. But as far as football season goes, the first week of September is still when the games are set to be played. So they made that decision last night as well. They said if they do go all virtual, then every kid will have a chance to play and participate in extracurricular activities. But if you decide to go – in school against virtual. If you go virtual, you don't have the opportunity to play extracurricular activity. So, again, it's going to be an interesting meeting next Tuesday. We'll be there, have the full report next Wednesday. But, again, right now, as far as when school starts, how it's going to start, it's all up in the air at this point. All right. That's the World Famous Butch and Bob Show on this Wednesday morning. Brought to you by Murphy Bill Supply for Southern Bank and Damon's Famous Fingers and Winks. Good morning from the Big Dog WIFO at 829. Up next, an update from Fox News Radio. At Woody Folsom Ford Baxley, the question is not how are your super...